Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video, uh, another plug side chat if you will. Uh, in today's video what I was wanting to talk about is something that's been on my mind for a little while and it's basically the question is whether or not the EPA should start testing for and accounting for uh, what's referred to as vampiric losses. Now if you're a Bolt EV owner, uh, you might not be aware of what this is. Uh, you know, for those of you who have followed my channel from the beginning, you'll know that basically the first week I owned my car, I had a blowout and parked it on top of a mountain for a couple of days, and I saw almost no energy losses over the period of time. But, uh, but within the Tesla community, uh, in particular, there's something that they refer to as vampiric losses, which is essentially because those cars are, are basically rolling computers constantly connected, right? Uh, they're always drawing power. And what you end up with from there is a, uh, a, a power or energy loss, uh, whether or not the car is on. And, uh, you know, some of the reports that I'm seeing now from Model 3 owners is, is as much as, you know, two, three, four kilowatt hours per 24 hour period of energy that they're losing. And that's a significant draw in, you know, in a more efficient car, that's 10, 15, 20 miles of uh, range that you're losing every day. Uh, now, if you're constantly plugged in, you might not even notice that that, that power is missing, but it is. Uh, and of course, for Model, Model S and Model X owners, it's a little less noticeable because those cars are less efficient than the Model 3. And then also, most of those owners get free supercharging. And so it just sort of gets lost in the shuffle of charging for free at superchargers. But Tesla Model 3 owners, they don't get that sort of uh, free supercharging. They basically pay for everything. And as a result, you know, that's power, that's money that's coming out of their pocket. And, uh, you know, two, three, four kilowatt hours a day over the course of a year at average power costs in the United States, you're looking at... Uh, 150 or more dollars a year in additional ownership costs. And, and I do feel that that's something that maybe um, the EPA should start to look to test for, especially as more and more electric vehicles uh, become interconnected, have onboard computer systems that are on all of the time. And, uh, and then of course, there, you know, the other thing to account for is things like uh, battery technology as it continues to evolve. Because some batteries have higher self-discharge rates than other batteries. So lithium tends to have a very low self-discharge rate, but who knows, maybe if graphene technology takes off, that will have a higher self-discharge rate uh, and, and more power that's coming you know, out of the battery even when it's not being used. Now, I don't know how the EPA would test for this. Maybe they would you know, have the car charged full, parked in a controlled temperature room, turned off, and let's sit for 10 days and you come back and test how much power was lost over the course of the day or of those 10 days and just sort of average it out. Um, but I do feel like it's something that, uh, that should be tested for. It's something that should be accounted for in the fueling costs on the EPA form. It's not all that different than a piece of, uh, you know, appliance or furniture or, uh, electric, uh, appliance that, you know, over the course of the year, they tell you, this is what your average energy costs are going to be. Uh, but anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree that this is something that EPA or other agencies should be testing for, uh, that it would show up on like an EPA sheet when you buy, you know, you buy your, uh, your car, you can tell exactly what it is. Um, but, uh, but if you enjoy this video, um, please like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Uh, it helps support the channel and, uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments.